Sumina Nagashi and Jayataku. The concept is Japanese cultural history combining two ancient crafts, mixed media, collage, illustration, and the elements of art are color, texture, and value. Sumina Gashi is the ancient technique of decorating paper with inks. It is believed to be the oldest form of marbling, originating in China over 2,000 years ago and practiced in Japan by Shinto priests as early as the 12th century. Sumina Gashi means to literally float inks. Japanese sumi inks were originally used, dropped carefully to float on a still water surface and then blown across to form delicate swirls. The ink was picked up by layering rice paper atop the water. Sumina Gashi, I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can create this background effect for your project. What you're going to need is a tray of water. This one's already got some ink in it, but we need to reapply ink every time we want to do a print. Sumina Gashi is marbling technique. It's an old ancient Japanese technique that they have used for thousands of years. We've got a selection of colours. Now I'm going to do just a couple of colours, two or three colours, just a couple of drips at a time. Don't need any more than that. Do blue, a couple of drips of black, and some green. And just a splash of yellow. So I can get that similar technique that I just showed you. And with a straw, I'm going to just use the end of a paintbrush. I'm just going to very carefully swirl it around. And what it's doing is actually, it's giving it sort of like a smoky tw twirling, sort of like a Chinese dragon effect and it's floating right on the surface. Then, take watercolour paper, float it on the top. Just very carefully, just dab it. I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush again. You can use the end of the straw. It doesn't take long, you just want to make sure that all the surface underneath has been caught by that floating ink. And then, just quickly lift it up. And there you are, boys and girls. Now you have your own Sumini Gashi floating ink background. And then after that, you're going to apply your Geotaco fish print to it, okay? Now it's your turn, boys and girls. Jayotaku, or fish robins, is an oriental art form which uses actual fish to create an art image. And here you can see an example on the right. Jayotaku originated in Japan in the mid-1800s as a way for anglers to record the characteristics and size of their catch. The record is so accurate that it is still used in present-day Japan to determine the winners of fishing contests. Artists produce fish prints by applying ink directly onto the body of a fish and then pressing rice paper or silk to receive the ink image. It is an exact reproduction. You've just finished your Sumini Gashi for your background where you were floating Japanese marble inks. Now you're going to do Jayotaku. You get rubber mold fish. These aren't real. And you're going to use printing ink or block ink and with a brayer I'm going to roll and coat the surface of the fish okay make sure that you get round the edges as well then with rice paper you're going to lay it on the surface don't let it move once you've got it on there and with your hands you're going to very carefully rub and I want you to get all around the whole fish, so you need to get around those sides as well. Make sure you get the mouth and rub it. And you can very carefully see that the print is starting to come through. Now remember you watched the demonstration video from Japan where they were using real fish and it was the technique that they used for measuring, especially for when they were doing contests and it could be very close and they were using it for printing. But also, it's a great way so that we can keep a record of the species. And other ways that they use this Jayataku for is for botanical prints as well, of plants. Now, 
when you are absolutely sure that you have it printed, you're going to pull it back and there you have your own Jayotaku fish print. I want you to do about two fish prints, okay? So you can use those and do a composition and mount these on your suminagashi background. But I'll show you that in another demonstration. But for now we're going to do our Jayotaku fish prints. Now it's your turn boys and girls. Let's go make some art. Use this time now to answer the essential questions. You have received your declarative knowledge. Also think what else could they use Jayotaku for as well as fish printing. Welcome back boys and girls. At this point we have combined two art projects. We've made Suminigashi which dates back to about 2000 years ago but they per perceive that it can go back as far as the 12th century. And then we're using a technique from the 1800s of Jayotaku where we're doing it, uh, Japanese fish printing. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to cut out our Jayotaku fish prints. When you do cut them very carefully, this one I've already started, I want you to go right around the very edge so you don't leave a white rim but go around the very edge of the blue print. You may find that some of the fins didn't print in totality so you're going to use another technique to complete the fins if there are parts that are missing. Now I've actually made three fish prints but I'm going to use just two so I'm going to pick the best ones that I've got here set this one to the side this one and look at this guy first and I want to decide how I want him to come into the picture. We're having our Suminagashi paper as landscape now I'm going to have him coming in that way and I'm going to have another one coming in that way but you can see just by that that there's actually tails going off. So what I want to do is I want to glue him down I'm going to show you how. You need a glue stick and very carefully just around the edges because this is rice paper and it's very fragile go around the edge okay just around the edge try not to create any blobs and I'm going to put him where I initially laid him where I like him okay so I like him there and this guy I'm going to have at the top so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to go around very carefully for the glue line okay and put him above okay so it's a bit of traffic and then you've got these gorgeous swells with the Suminigashi floating marbled ink now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that off very carefully trim that off and I'm going to do the same with this one let's just take that I'm stuck there do the same with this one trim it but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that tail and I'm going to have it going off so it's as though this fish is going after another fish and then this one's coming across. If I wanted to I could even add that tail on there but I don't want to do too much. If I'm not happy with that tail there I could even pull it up and do it on this side which actually probably looks a bit better, better balanced. Now you're going to get a jar of coloured pencils and this is where when you've got everything glued down you're going to go over it very carefully and shade in. So where your fish you're using blue as your printing block ink now you can add in extra detail and you can use any colours but I, I don't want you to lose the scaly effect I just want you to bring in additional colours onto your fish okay so where you may have found that the scales didn't print or the fins didn't f finish properly you can add that detail in you can add some value to it 
And then when you've got that whole thing completely finished, you've got yourself two ancient Japanese crafts combined into one. You've got some inigashi and jayotaku. There you go now, boys and girls. Let's make some art. I can statements. I can create an artwork by combining two ancient Japanese crafts.